This time, we will talk about the second approach in requirements modeling, which is the class-based modeling. We have already established that the class-based modeling is an offshoot of object-oriented analysis. In this kind of analysis, we model user requirements or any system for the matter by looking at the objects that participate in the system and the interactions among and between these objects. I know that you're quite familiar about this object-oriented because I believe that it was discussed by your previous um, um, instructor in your previous topic. Uh, I just need to emphasize um, those um, classes and objects that we can dig deeper here in the class-based model. Okay, so let's have an example. So if you will look at around your room, um, there will be a physical objects that can be easily identified, classified, and defined in terms of its attributes and operations. These um, objects can be performed. For example, um, let's go directly to, uh, let's use human being or us. Um, human as the object, then name, address, age, gender preference, and status as the, uh, as the attributes, right? Another example, television. Television as the object, then its attributes are color, of course, the color of television, if you want to make it um, white, black, it's really up to you. Next, um, another attribute for television is the size, okay? And we also have the brand of television and more. Software problems can be characterized in terms of a set of interacting objects, each object representing something of interest to the system. So in connection with our TV object example earlier, by the wall, if you will look at the wall, you will find the cable socket, which is an another object. The TV connects to the, cable uh, to, to the cable socket and retrieves movies that it can be displayed, right? I can fairly say that this is easy, am I right? Uh, we can do the same in our problem area and also identify the objects, although it can be a bit challenging to do so compared doing it physically. Okay, we can begin by conducting a grammatical parse in each of the use case scenario we have identified. We list down nouns and noun phrases for each use case scenario as a potential cases or classes, sorry, potential classes. Uh, we then check if these nouns or potential classes are necessary to implement a solution. If so, then these classes are part of the solution space. Um, if one, um, if on the other hand, the class is used to describe a solution, then it is part of the problem space. In these examples, um, we actually, just to check, um, I underlined all potential classes. So I just need to change my marker. One moment, or I'll just use the laser pointer. Okay, I underlined um, student the classes, um, semester, classes, students, students here, courses to take, yes, um, the student here, the schedule, the conflict, um, the student here again, the classes, selection, and also the enlistment. All these classes belong to the solution space, okay? So how do we know that these are valid classes? Analysis classes can manifest themselves in one of these ways. So uh, these are the different types of objects. So we have an external entities. So for ex external entities, um, this actually produce or consume information 
to be used by a computer-based system. A good example for that one is other system or our third-party systems or third-party applications that we can use um, in our system that can be an object, then devices, and we also have the people or the peopleware. Okay, next. We also have things. Um, things that are part of the, um, of the information domain for the problem. So a good example, reports, printed reports, or uh, displays. We also have letters and signals. We also have occurrences or events. Take note of this one, okay? Um, a good uh, occurrences or events that occur within the context of system operation. A good example of property transfer or the completion of a series of robot movements. Okay, that's an event. Next, roles. It, it was played by a people who interact with the system. We have the manager, we have the engineer, we have the salesperson. Basically, these are the, uh, the users, right? Next, uh, we have the organizational units or the OU. Um, that are relevant to an application like the division or the department. We also have the group of people and also a team of people like this one. Okay, second to the last, we have places. Okay, for places, um, actually that establish the context of the problem and the overall function of the system. For example, manufacturing floor or the load, uh, loading dock. Okay. And the last type of an object, it um, actually it's a structures, okay? Structures that define a class of objects or related classes of objects. A good example for that one, since we're talking about <laughs> in the events, we're talking about a series of robot movements. It's also good to include a good example like sensors or four wheeled vehicles or computers, like that one. Um, in the problem space, take note class, uh, we cannot guarantee that all of these objects can be found. Of course, we need to filter those objects that are relevant only to our system or the solution. Okay? Going back to our enrollment system example in our previous discussion, uh, the actors by default become objects in our model. I believe that I, uh, I included there the student, the teacher, advisor, register, clerk, um, the clerk, the cashier, and also the bank validation service, right? And we also um, add other objects that participate in the system like advertisement, the course, and also the form 5A. These are just a few of them, but we can have it more. Okay, so if uh, actually this is just like what I said earlier, uh, these are our objects um, in our enrollment system. Take note that, for example, one moment, since we already talked about the types of objects earlier, I can just highlight one moment. For example, the student, the teacher, the advisor. Um, the clerk, the register, the cashier, um, a type of a of object, these are roles, right? So these are roles. I really want, okay, there you go. Okay, these are roles. Next one, let's identify as well, one moment. Um, how about the bank? validation service a bank validation service this can be an external entities right so actually i just put here e or x sorry entities or en i really want to write but okay okay there you go forgive my handwritten <laughs> okay next um, how about the advertisement? I just need to check or change the color. Okay, advertisement. For this one, um, we can say that this type of 
an object is actually an event, right? This can be an event. There we go, right? And for the course and also the 4, 5A, I think we can put that one as a thing. So these two can be a thing. Okay, there you go. For us to validate if the analysis classes um, gathered are valid or not, we have code. Uh, we have code and Jordan on 1991. They have suggested these things to consider for a class. So, what are the characteristics of a classes? Okay, let's read them up. So, we have uh, retain information. So, the potential class will be useful during analysis only if information about it must be rem uh, must be rem uh, must be remembered so that the system can function right so it's retained information so dapat hindi siya nawawala or dapat nasa isip lang talaga siya or what we call that um um we make sure that our classes is actually a uh, hindi talaga siya nalilimutan like that that's the potential class of the retained information we also have needed services. For needed services, a um, potential class uh, must have a set of identifiable operation that can change the value of its attributes in some way. Okay. Next one. During requirements analysis, we are talking about the multiple attributes. Okay. During requirements analysis, the focus should on the major information. A class with a single attribute may, in fact, be useful during design, but it is actually probably better represented as an attribute of another class during the analysis activity. So we have, it can be that this class is also an attribute from the other class, right? Next, we have a common attributes. A set of attributes can be defined for the potential class and these attributes apply to all instances of the class because again um, there can be a class that can or for example um, uh, there can be a class that can be used by the entire system because it has a common commonalities right of the attributes huh? we're talking about the attributes next we also have the common operations a set of operations can be defined for the potential class and these operations apply to all instances of the class. So it's still the same on um, commonalities, but we're talking about the operations. Next, um, essential requirements. Um, external entities that appear in the problem space and produce or consume information essential to the operation of any solution to the system will almost uh, will almost always be defined as classes in the requirements model. So, these are the characteristics of classes. This is based. Uh, this is based from Code and Jordan. Okay. This time, uh, let's talk about the class diagram. Okay. Yeah. Class diagram is what we use to represent or visualize classes. The class diagrams are widely used in the modeling of object-oriented systems because they are the only UML diagrams which can be mapped directly with object-oriented languages. The classes serve as the obstructions or the obstruction of the data and the operations of the objects that had been earlier identified. So if you can see our class diagram here, one moment okay if you can see our class diagram here uh, we have the class name which is our student okay let's see let me change again the color because I cannot see it well okay here we have the student as the class name if we will talk about the attributes we have size ID which has a numeric data type uh, we have name which has a string data type year level, username, 
um, password, and also a program. Okay? Take note that if we will talk about attribute, it, it describes the data items that define the class in the context of the problem. And also, attributes are derived from the use case. Take note of that. Okay? And let's talk about the operations or the methods. So uh, in our class diagram, we can also include the methods or the operations for, um, for this one. For example, um, we have change password. So of course, we are using the Boolean as a data type. We have the login, um, is active, get program, and also the change here. So we have the, uh, again, if we will talk about operations or methods, it defined the behavior of an object. Uh, we have the categories like um, man, uh, manipulate data. For manipulation of data, I believe this is for the changing of the password because once the user will log in first, um, this, for example, the system will generate a, a default password. So the user needs to update or change his or her password, right? Uh, perform computation. Let's see. Uh, no, there is none. Uh, inquire state of an object. Um, this one is active. This one. Of course, we need to check if um, the student, if it's active or not. Because how about those students na nag LOA po? So we can consider them inactive, right? Monitor an object for the uh, occurrences of a controlling event.